So, it's a starting. So, let's turn off the countdown timer. Go here. So, welcome everybody on a Saturday evening. It's 7.30 p.m. here in Germany. Welcome and thank you for coming to my live stream again for this week. This week it's making a hip hop beat. It's not going to be the beat you heard in the background in the beginning. Um, it's just a random beat I put together. And this is not about making the best beat in the world today. It's more about the basics of what you can do in Cubase, what you can do with Groove Agent, how you can use the 808 sounds that are in Cubase. <clears throat> uh, I'm explaining some functions from a Groove Agent. So, but before we start, let's go to a little schedule for the next weeks. Hello, Reggie. I see Reggie is here. So, the schedule for the next weeks. Next week, on the 3rd of July, I have a day off. There will not be a live stream. The, day, the week after that, that's in two weeks' time, it's making EDM sounds with Retrolock and Flux. Flux is a synth that is in Halion. And uh, in this live stream, I will talk about yeah, how you make your own sounds, how you listen to other sounds and analyze the sounds so you know what you need. And I'm going to make a bass sound, a lead sound, and a plug sound. Uh, and I will make the sound with Halion and with the Flux. Flux is a wavetable synth, Halion is more classic synth, but it's a little bit different. And the week after that, in three weeks' time, uh, I will make a synthwave track from start to finish. Synthwave, that is the genre that's hip for, I don't know how long now, for some time. It's mostly influenced by the 80s. And it's influenced by two waves of the 80s. One is the pop and wave, the sound like Human League, Howard Jones, uh, with the analog sounds and everything. The other one is more like the cinematic sound of the 80s, of the John Carpenter movies, of Blade Runner. Not what you talk today as cinematic with a lot of orchestra, but with a lot of um, synthesizers from the 80s. Uh, in this case, I will make a synthwave track before I will prepare that. I'm not making that start to finish or from scratch here in the live stream. And um, I will make it before and then recreate it. Uh, most of the time when I do something like that, the end result is different than what I wanted to achieve. But that's okay. That's always funny because when I try to copy something, I never succeed. And well, then I come up with some better things anyway. Okay. So let's go back to what's going on today. Today, making a hip hop beat. Cubase plugins only, as almost. Otherwise, I have it in uh, the schedule somewhere. Uh, this is just for you, so you see what you can achieve in Cubase. I want to show you how you can chop a sample. Sure, we're gonna. Yes, DJSM. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I hope you learn a lot from me. Um, this live stream is mostly not for you to learn something. I mean, you learn something from it, but I do that for my own education, for my fun. You know, it's fun to do these live streams things. And most of the time when I come up with a topic like here, making a hip hop beat or something else or, or synthwave, I never did before a synthwave. I was there in the 80s. I made 80s music in the 80s, but not the new synthwave stuff. I have to educate myself, learn how it's being done and how you can do it in Cubase so that I can transport it to you then. Okay, so today chopping a sample in Groove Agent, 808 drums in Cubase and talking a little bit about the MPC, what's going on and um, how it all started. Okay, let's go to Cubase. There's my Cubase, there's my Cubase. Um, today I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have a countdown here on my other screen. That's now going from 60 minutes backwards so uh, that I keep time and don't go too long with the live stream. Okay, what I prepared is just an empty 
template here. Uh, this is the, okay, we can make this invisible. This is the beat that was running in the beginning. I don't need that. Um, normally when you do a hip hop beat or when you start making hip hop, and that's how it all started, um, you sample something from a record. You have a sample. I have lots of um, samples here on my hard disk and I can use any sample, but in this particular beat, I want just to recreate or create a, my own sample, show you how you can make it sound old, show you how you can chop it in Groove Agent, and how you can, for example, use the sampler in um, Cubase to mimic something like um, the MPC, the first MPC version. So that means in the beginning, I'm quick and dirty making a, a sample, making a piece of music um, with strings, piano and bells. So I have something to, to sample and something to work with. So I prepared already some piano here. Let me show if I can play something. No, I cannot because I want to hear. Okay. Okay. Let's go here. I got a pre count of one bar. Okay, because I didn't hear, okay, I didn't hear the click, so I'm off. Let me start again. Okay, let me do the sick part again. Here, like this. Throw that away. Okay, let me just take this. That's enough for that. Glue it together. Where's my glue? Here it is. Oops. Oops. And we have it. Okay. Let me look at this. Okay. So now that should be, I was on the wrong computer. Good. Okay, this is just some simple chords. This is A minor, D minor, um, A minor sus4 and A minor 7 and or D minor sus4. Okay, what I do next is to have some strings. Okay, this is here. Okay. Take this, that'll do for now. And to have some percussive element, I take some bells here. Okay. Okay, so now let's pretend this is the sample we were dreaming of and uh, we had that in our mind and we have that on some recording. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm another 
One is that I'm faking something. In this uh, particular beat, I'm going to fake the sample here and pretend that this is a sample I used from any other record. So I'm putting this in a group channel to select the tracks. So I call the sample. Okay, let me save that. Then make a quick mix. Okay, let's go here. Press P for part and then we loop it. Okay, this is here. Where's my group? This is my group track here. I'm going to the insert. Here's only the Halion and the Steinberg. Roomberg is okay. Okay, so with a little a little too much. Like this. And now we want to make it sound like a record. So we go to the next secret weapon of Cubase. It's the Gruncherizer. Don't know if you know this one. This one runs in the background all the time. It's not running when you start. It runs in the background. It's putting in some noise. A crackle distortion. So if I put up this noise here. I don't know. You see here, the meter is running, there is something. Oh, let me put that up here. Maybe you hear that a little bit. Then a little bit noise, crackle. And the crackle is, depending on if you have a turntable with 33 rounds per minute, 45, or the very, very old ones were on 78 rounds per minute. So we go to 33, crackle a little bit. Then distortion and EQ will make it sound different. AC is the, the hum you have from the mains, from the 50 or 60 hertz. Let's see, this is 50 hertz. You hear that now in the background a little bit. I don't want that, but I want to have the EQ and the distortion a little bit. So let's listen to that. So this is a little bit more in the middle. So now let's pretend this is our old sample from any old record. Go to export this, make a mix down of this, call it sample, like this, doesn't matter, export. So we have it on a new track, I import it on a new track, here. So then we can mute this. And again, what I often do is making a folder track, call it unused, and save these. So there are other way, where is it? Oh, there's a star, there we are. So, I mute it. So now we have that, what I call the sample, and um, I'm going to show you how you can sample that in, in Groove Agent, and tell you what some of the functions of Groove Agent mean here. So just listen. <laughs> Yes. So, um, let's take the first roof agent, call it sample, and open it. So this is uh, simple. What you do is you just take the sample and put it here, and now it's running. Running without a stop. And one of the interesting functions of, uh, of roof agent here is here. There, uh, where you see standard is the playback quality, and if you go to turntable, it's mimicking or it's emulating something that we did in the beginning when the samplers were young, when the samplers were just invented, like the MPC. Um, in those days, when you had the first MPC, where's my sample? Oh. Wait a minute. See where's my sample? 
Oh, there it is. Uh, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, it threw it away. Uh, sample. Sample. Let me try that again. Okay. Go here. Oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. Sample live. Okay. That's the sample live. So, in those days, you couldn't record your samples with your machine on a hard disk or on a floppy disk because those were very expensive on one hand and on the other hand they were not fast enough to process the recording so you had to sample first in your ram in your internal memory and then you could save it on a disk but the problem is ram internal memory was very very expensive we're talking about I say 70 euro for one megabyte. I'm not talking about gigabyte. Megabyte is one thousandth uh, of a gigabyte, but you have now you have maybe 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig in your PC. In those days, in the MPC or in the archive assembler, we had four megabyte or eight megabytes. So you could sample only, say, five seconds, six seconds, whatever. And um, if your sample was longer than what you wanted to sample, there was one trick. You uh, turned up the turntable to a higher speed. So if you had, for example, um, an LP and record running on 33 rounds per minute, you put it on 45 rounds per minute and sampled it with 45 rounds per minute, and then you pitched it down in your sampler. So let's just emulate that. With, or take a new one. We need that later. Um, uh, we duplicate track, okay, we throw it away later. Okay, we take this one, and audio, um, advanced, well, advanced uh, process, where we are, time stretch. Like a new version. Um, I already calculated the ratio for the time stretching. So the difference between 45 rounds per minute and 33 rounds per minute is 73%. So if you run a sample or a LP or a record that has 10 seconds um, on a higher speed, it will be only be 7 seconds long. And if you go here, Elastic Efficiency, the algorithm on tape, it will not change the sound so that it's corrected. It will just speed up and you got that Mickey Mouse effect. Let me show you here, like this. This is what you get when you run it faster. So this is what, what they did. And you can find also today a lot of people that do that. Uh, when you see YouTube videos, um, you can see them speed up the turntable and sample like this because it changes the sound. And uh, let's go to this and audio bound selection here like this. Replace events. Okay. Now we have it here faster. Okay. And what we did then was we used the sampler. So we sampled this fast one, like here. And you had it here with my sampler. There is it. There is it. So if you want to have that in the right speed, you just go down and pitch it a little bit. Until you have the right tuning. So that's what we did with the MPC in the beginning. We sampled it faster. And we used it maybe like this. Or we just used this here, played it two or three keys uh, lower and pitched it up so it was like the original because we didn't have 10 or 20 seconds of sampling time. Um, and um, Groove Agent is emulating this. Groove Agent is then going to, when you have it on a turntable, um, it's emulating that speed up and uh, down pitching. And these samplers were 12 bit in the beginning. So everything is a little bit grainy and has some kind of noise in it. Okay, now let's remove this one again. We don't need that. That was just for demonstration. Okay, so this is the sample here. Okay, now we have it here. And you hear uh, uh, some, some kind of high ringing that comes from the 12-bit reduction. Okay, now when you go here to slice, it will detect some slices here. And that's what we do next. We create the slices and then we will have all the slices here 
on our pets. Do the first one. We can use this. We can change them later. Uh, some things are important here. You, you go here and um, go select all pets. Then we have all pets here. Then we go back to main. Make sure that all of them is on turntable. And make sure when you go to sample that they are all not on no loops on an one sh uh, they are on one shot that means when you press the key uh they play until the end so they play once until the end and don't stop so and uh, what else you have to do is just uh be sure that you put it on exclusive mode that's here in exclusive gr group. That means all the pets are in the same exclusive gr group. You cannot play two at the same time. So I'm using this to make sure when I have a longer sample and this plays for a long time, I want to play the next sample. The next one stops when I hit the first one. Um, some people work different. Some people want the sample to be playing as long as they hit the pet. Uh, but in, in my um, MPT-218, sometimes I have the double trigger, so if I hit and hold the pad, sometimes it's double triggering. So I like to have just short hit, just a short hit, and then it will play. Okay, so now chop that sample. This we need later. This is the sample here. Let's see what we come up with. I know there are people out there, maybe also some people watching now and people like you who can do that better. Um, but this is just to demonstrate some basic ideas. Uh, let's just see what I come up with. Well, let's, let's check the samples. Okay, uh, you can also change the samples anytime. Like here, start point. That's okay. So this one and this one. This is good. Okay. So this way you can chop up every sample you have, no matter if you make your own sample or get it from any record or any construction kit or wherever you have it from, or from Spotify or, or other music services. Okay, let me try something here. Don't know if this works, but this is okay for me. Okay, this is on eighth notes. Okay, what I do often here, so go to MIDI and then go to the functions and go to legato because then I have long an, a notes and it's better to click on the notes than if they are long. In this case, it's uh, the sample is playing one shot anyway, so it's playing all the time. Okay, we come back to that later. We use that only in the intro. Later we use that sample here. That's our main sample in the background. Okay, let's go back to Groove Agent and find some drums here. Okay, go here, kit. So, whatever it says, it says hip hop something. I don't care too much what it says. Let's see what I have here. Okay, a little bit too much. Let's 
see what else we have. Okay, this is very clean. Not too much reverb. So I can use it for later. Okay, we just take this as a start. Okay, and in that case, here is a function um, that you have here, drum map. Um, create map from instrument. That means when you now go in the drum, drum editor, you see the instruments, or like what I do here, MIDI insert, beat designer. Okay, I can see the instruments here. Oops. Let's go away from this. Okay, the kick. Okay, this is on 16th note. Let me make a 32. Okay, we have a snare here. Okay, we can now go here and find another one. The snare here. Okay, two snares. So if you hold the mouse and drag up and down, you get different velocities here. Okay, let's go here and find some. Where's the hi hat? Hi hat open, hi hat closed. Okay, like this. Hi hat closed. Like this. Now I'll go here. Make a little change. Little variation here. Also can solo here. here and there's also a swing function in the speed designer here on this side you can select which one of the swing settings you want to have one or two and in that case in this case every second beat or every second drum is changed by the swing that means either delayed or pushed forward so here down here you can set up what swing you want and uh, like here you have that one, it's in the middle, no swing, and this is two. Now let's listen to the hi hat. Here, dun, 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 dun. I check to, to swing two, go back to one. Now it's even. So, what you can do is just mess around with it here and go forward. I like to have it somewhere in the middle here. Only a little bit swing. Okay, something else. Uh, well, I don't want to do too much here. So, uh, where's the... Okay. Okay, that'll do for that. Um, what you do here is you can change between different setups you have uh, also on the keys what you also can do is you just take this drag it over to your drum track and you have it here in your drum track and don't forget if you do that don't forget to turn off the beat design here on the left side because it will maybe double it then or play two times so like this go here okay Okay, so let's go to Retrolog and find some bass. I know that some of you might now stop and go to the drums, go to your sounds and refine the sounds again and again and again. Uh, normally I would also do that, but right now I'm just putting some more elements in it and then I'm going to the mixing and refining the sound stage so that you hear what this is going to be ending up like. Okay, um, let's first go here.
Okay, this is drums. Little housekeeping. Assemble, I call it a keyboard. Okay, this is bass. Now go here. We need a bass. We need a bass. So we turn this down. The octave here. Okay, like this. So we take the second one on 16th. Very grainy here. Add a, bit, a little bit here. Detuning. Okay, it's not nothing like I expect it to be. Okay. Tuning, okay, like here. Then we take the filter. Cut off. So a little bit more cut off. Then we take the envelope. This is here. So we can use the envelope here to have a little kick in the beginning. Now, some resonance. Oh, maybe this is too low here, the octave. No, 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 we need it that low. I hope it's not distorting here. I put the brick wall limiter in the stereo bus. So let's turn this down a little bit. Okay, I put the brick wall limiter here in the stereo bus so that it's not distorting when it's going to OBS and to the live stream. Let's go to span here. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's deep enough. Maybe a little bit too grainy. Oh, we need a little bit. Okay, push this down again. Okay. Now we go back. So. Okay. Just a long lasting bass. We can double this later with another bass sound. As I said before, this is not going to be or meant to be the best and biggest beat in the world. This just demonstrates some ideas. Okay. Okay, that works. Um, let me take this and take it here. Take this. Okay, this is eight. So what next? Um, ah, I want some, some, some seventeens, seventies sound going to the Halion here, and I want a Wurlitzer piano. Wurlitzer. Let's see which one we take. Okay, see? Yeah. This sounds good. Original. Let's go here. That's it, I don't need more. Okay. So in this case, I'm using another effect here. 
I'm using something that's called a tremolo. Uh, let's call it this Wurlitzer. And the tremolo is an effect that is changing the volume of the sound. You might be familiar with um, the vibrato, which is going the pitch up and down, up and down, up and down. And in this case, we are using the Wurlitzer sound. Okay, let's go here. Like this. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, not too wide. This is 70, so it was a mono. Okay, that's the one. Then, okay, this is the wood, it's a sound. And then I'm taking another one from the, before we go to the sound design, uh, I'm taking a guitar here, like a strut or something. Let's see what we come up with here. And I remember back in those days when it all started, um, I remember that complete albums were made with a guitar sound from the DX7 synth or from samplers. And for example, one from, uh, what's his name of the Australian guy? Celebrate Youth was the song, Rick Springfield, Rick Springfield. The one album where Celebrate Youth is on all the guitars came from uh, synthesizers, all the guitars, all those Strat caster sounds came from the DX7. And I remember also, Reggie, I don't know if you know that, I remember when we did The Man on the Move, with Ricky, I think the guy who made the music told me that all the guitars were from the DX7. And I know when you listen to some Michael Jackson stuff, you don't know if this is a real guitar or if it's any other guitar, um, like like here a sampled one. And uh, it, in fact, it doesn't it doesn't matter because it has to be good in the complete arrangement. So no one will tell afterwards what you used. Let me check this. So, let me just deck check it here. Okay. And throw it away and we double this one. And put this to the left and put this to the right. Okay, throw it away. This is more like an effect, this is more like a gimmick, you know, just to make it a little bit interesting, more interesting. Good, before we now go on and put more things on it, uh, we're going to throw all the things together. Oh, okay, I just want to show you something else here. Okay, take these two. Electric guitar. The wallet says a keyboard. Okay. Okay, like this. And um, there are some some people are looking all over the place for these sounds. Uh, they ask me where are 808 sounds in um, in Cubase. Uh, if you're looking for 808 sounds in Cubase, don't look in um, Groove Agent. Go to Halion, and there's a kit called T8. And uh, the T8 and CR kit is the 808 kit plus the CR78. The CR78. From Cork was the one, no, from Roland was the one that Phil Collins used on In the Air Tonight. And you also have something called T9. This is a 909. So we now go here and take the analog kit here. So let's see. Yes, you have that deep bass here, the normal bass, that one falling down, and, and all the other ones. So I just grab my drums here. And copy them over here. Let's see what they play. So 
Stelle C ist es. Okay. Und das ist der One with Drops. Die wir wollen. Okay, this is a little bit distorted. So let's take this one. This one. Take this. Okay. Use the second one also. Yes, use the second one also. So that's it for now for this. Now we're going to refine the sounds. Okay, let's uh, turn this down a little bit. Um, uh, the master is too high here, I see. Master is too high. So the first thing I do is that I Take this one and tear it apart. I go to dissolve parts, separate pitches, and then I will have individual tracks for the drums here. From kick to hi-hat to whatever, go here. So I don't need that anymore, that's the full one. So I take this to the unused here, and it's gone. So now here I have only the kick, the hi-hat closed, the snare one, the snare two, the hi-hat open. Oh, can I change that? I wanted to have, um, I wanted to have a clap. I wanted to have a clap here. Good, let's take that clap. Okay. Okay, good. Now we go to the 808 again here. And um, I'm going to treat the 808 like a sample. So that means uh, I'm not going to separate it. I'm going to keep it and uh, mix it in one stereo file. But first I take this one here, make a group. Yep. Make a group, drums. And then turn this off, go here. Turn everything down here. Okay, that's the drums, they have to stay. That's the 808. Retro look. The Wurlitzer and the sample and the two guitars. I'll come back to that later. Start with the drums. Good. So I have to turn a little bit up so that you can hear it. So let's take the kick here, go to the equalizer, okay, a little more, don't need the deep ones, a little bit more kick, then go to the compressor, again I'm using the compressor after the equalizer, that's what I always do, so take the vintage compressor, it's like an um, 76. Okay, what's this? Okay. And then again, I'm using something I uh, also showed you last time, which is the multi band envelope shaper. Envelope shaper. So let's first look at this. Where is my control room? There we have it. My span is here. Okay. We can see this is about 60 hertz for the deep one. So almost, okay. Um, so the fundamental is at 60 hertz. The normally at 120 hertz, one octave higher is, this is here somewhere, is the first octave and then the kick is somewhere around well 2 to 6k 2k to 6k 
Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Then in this multiband now I can go and make individual bands for the lows. So it's 120, so we go here. So now I can shape the sound here. The deep kick, the bass can make it longer, a little bit longer. Let's wait for the double hit. Okay, a little bit too long. Go to the middle one. Here, we don't need that. Too much, a little bit. Like this. And then we take this one. This is just for the highs. Can turn it up here. Go here. On solo. So, before, after. A little bit more kick, a little more highs, and a little longer bass, so we hear it better. Good. Then we take the first snare here. Listen to this. Okay. In this case, we're using again the compressor after the EQ, take the tube one for a change, like this. Okay, one of the hits. Is not loud enough. I think it must be the last one. Let's see. Yes, they are not loud enough. They are not the same volume. So we take this MIDI. We go to List Editor. This is here. Then go here. Up, oh, come here. Then we select all, and we see here date two. Data one is the number, the note number. Um, data 2 is the velocity when you hit the note and data 3 is the release velocity when you release your key. So we go here and put them on 1.7. Oh, okay. Why can't I not change that? That's funny. Should change. Okay, let's do like this. Do like this. Okay, one won't go for all. Doesn't matter if it won't work. Can get around to this. So okay. Okay. Now we need make some room. What do we have? Drums room, medium snare. Long snare. Okay, a little less. Reverb time. Okay, then for change we take first the hi hat. Okay, the open hi hat, the closed one to the left. I always I always put my drums like a drummer would use them. That means when you sit behind the drums, you have the hi hat on the left, you have the tom on the right, the floor tom on the right, and from the toms you go from high to low, and uh, that's the way I mix my drums. Some people mix it the other way around, from the view of the listener. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's artificial drums anyway. Okay, go here. We don't need that. Okay, the second one is here. Second snare. Oh, that's the claps. Not the snare, that's the claps. That's good. I was looking for that. Okay, we don't need it here. Okay, need something here. Like this, a little bit more mid-range. 
then like this. I take the windage again, fast compressor, medium attack. So the transients go through, short release, turn it up to eight like this. So you hear the decay of the snare, it goes clack and then uh, the uh, clap goes clack and then shh. You hear that there's something and a, a noise in the background, like from a reverb or something. And uh, that's what you hear and that was the compressor is bringing out, but that's okay. That's okay for me. Okay, oh, that's a lot of the snare, but I don't care. Okay. Okay, here we say bass. I call it growl because it has something like a growl. We copy that, duplicate, and call this deep. And here we take goes this way. I take something I made once I called 808 bass. I don't know if that's what you call the 808 bass. Okay, you won't find it. Uh, what was about red? Ah, oh, it's because it's here. It's here. It's okay. Now we have it. Red look. This is only a very deep bass adding up to that. Okay, now before we go on, I'm going to do something um, with a market track here. Okay, let's get rid of this one. I don't need the core track. Take the market track and make a quick setup of how I want to arrange the track. So I go here. These are four bars I have and uh, go to the market track. This one, the first one, call it intro. I need an intro. This is only four bars long. Okay, then after that, we go to the first, let's call it the first part. And we take this one, should be length 10, elf, or eight. Eight, a length of eight. Okay. And it's called part one. After that, for eight bars, we take the hook and name it here, hook. Okay, then we have some colors so we can see where we are. So it doesn't matter the colors are named. Then we go to the next part, we go to the hook. Then we go here, we make this blue and call it break down. This is the part where normally a lot of things are dropping off. After that, take a hook again, hook again, so that's it. We're almost at three minutes now. Okay. Um, then we go here. Okay, let's go this way. Everything. Let me let me up, glue that together. So we have the eight bars everywhere, or the, the four bars everywhere. Okay. And then we go here. Where are we? Okay, we're here. Uh, not like this. So, and for those of you who watch me more often know that the number seven here, the mute tool is my beloved tool because I use it to randomly click in the parts and change them. Okay, let's go back here. Let's look at the 808 drums. Uh, let's take some part or something here. Okay, the 808 drums. Now let's pretend this is a sample. So we use it like this. And 
and uh, when you go here, go high pass. Like this. So, boom, now you have it. This is one of the functions you have in the, in the equalizer is that you have different filters, high pass filters, and some react on this, on the Q factor here, on how wide or how narrow your band is. And in this case, if you have a high pass filter, like this, like this, and you make it more narrow, you get a kind of overshoot here. So you just pronounce better your bass here, and you don't need what's below that, like this. And here, the long 808 bass. Okay, go here. So what's the next? What do we have here? The Wolitzer. Wolitzer. Oh, go to the right. Okay, solo this a moment. So I hear where we are. And uh, yes, we don't need the deep bass here. Cut this. They want to have it more 70s, a little more mids, not too much, a little lower. Okay, then again here, let's take the tube compressor, put it in, only a little bit gain reduction here. Okay, put the output up. to do something about these two so they sound a little bit better so go to delay okay I have to be careful because it's We need an odd one. Don't don't make it like a quarter note or an eighth note or a full beat because it then will not be heard. It will just come after the same track again. So feedback. We don't need only one reverb. Go a little bit. So just to give it a little bit room doesn't matter here too much we go here take it over to the other one so here's the EQ copy EQ settings take these oops that's my EQ here yep. copy it here so what we else we need is uh, for the Wolitzer and the guitars we need a reverb, so add effects channel to selected channels. Call it instrument reverb. We take that's my really revelation here. Like this. Okay. with it some longer ones what's this no oh, no that's a little bit too short
Take the large hall. It's okay. And then we go here to the EQ. And let's show you here. A little bit rid of the mud here. We don't need that in the reverb. And it's high enough, so we don't need any highs here anymore. I hope you can hear me good. I hope you can hear the sound very good. If not, simply write in the chat. Okay? Or if you have any suggestions or any questions or you want to do me uh, want me to do something else or you don't like it go ahead so so first things first um i need to have my intro because the intro is where the people listen the first so we go here we use at the intro we use the 808 drums, we don't need them. Here, normally I don't cut it. Normally I just mute it, but in this case I know I don't need them here. Maybe I need them here, here. I need them here in the breakdown. And maybe here in the last hook again. So, what else do we have? Um, we can, for example, have... Uh, this one was, I think, the clap. Yes. So, okay. We don't need the clap here. We could take the clap here. And the breakdown. We keep the kick. Like this. Like this. Um, that's the way I work randomly. I put things together. Think about how it would sound. And uh, then... Um, I go and play it all through and refine it a little bit. Okay, in the hook here, we go again in the first one without the clap, the second one with the clap on here. Okay, the bass and here in the breakdown part, we're only using the deep bass. Also, here we're only using the first part, the deep bass, like this, or the, the growl bass, and then the deep is coming too in the, in the hook. And here we have everything together. The Wurlitzer will not play in the beginning. Will only play here in the second one of the hook. Also not in the part in the second one of the hook. Uh, it will play in the start of the breakdown. And then again at the end. Then the sample. The sample is very important because this is our main melody, our main sample that's running. Um, let's go and have that. Here we can have that here. No, we don't have that here. And... Uh, we also have don't have that here. We can make that here, maybe half of it. Uh, let's see how that sounds later. We just take this one and cut it and go away with this. Okay, we have that again. Then the guitar. Okay, um, let's put some of the guitar here because we still need something. In the intro, throw this away, go here, only the second part of the guitar, then uh, throw this away, keep it in the second part of the hook, we don't need it here, we keep the first part here for a change, then we go to the hook again, only in the beginning is here, uh, okay, we take here on the uh that these two we see let's see how that sounds then here from the hook here like this okay um let's just go back to the beginning just to see no okay Okay, so the guitar is not sounding good. The guitar with that reverb or that echo, that's not sounding good. I don't like that. I don't like that. So let me just turn that off. I keep that, but I turn that off. As I said before, this is not going to be, or this is not meant to be. Okay, what is this? Oh yeah, okay, my timer is now, my timer is now up. It's um, 60 minutes now. So please keep hanging on if you like that. Um, it's, as I said before, it's not going to be the best beat in the world. It's just to show you some, some things you can do in 
Dubase. So what else I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a synth, some like a flute synth or something like that. Okay, in it, okay. Let me go here, like this. Okay, uh, oh, it's going into instrument. That's okay, it's going in the instrument. Reverb. That's okay. That'll sound good. Then we take another one. What is this? Okay, we take another one, one octave higher. Again, low. Then put up the resonance. The third one will be a little bit lower. Some grid. For that. Okay, envelope. So what's important is we put it here in mono. That means monophonic. That means you can only play one note at a time. If you play a chord, the highest note will be played. The, only the highest. Then we need some glide. That means that takes some time from one to the other note. Like this, a little bit slower. Okay, put this on highest. And now we need a little bit more grain. Yeah. We need a little bit more. There's a background one. So we go to key follow. That means the um, if I if I play higher, the filter will also open more up than when I play lower. Okay. That will do for this. Go to effects. Go to the phaser. Only a little bit. Also use some reverb. Now this is going to be again very hard for me because I have to play very very good because if I'm playing not staccato but legato meaning bending the notes from one note to the next one the filter will not be triggered again and the filter will be closed at the second note. I'll show you in a moment if I play like this. The filter is then triggered again if I play like this. The second note is the filter not triggered again, but I'm, I will find be, be, will be fine with that. Uh, go to this, to the hook, find something we can play, and let's have some fun with that synth. Um, let's hear it, turn it down a bit. Ah, something I forgot. Uh, if you want to mimic one of the old synthesizers, like the Minimoog or the ARP or whatever, you should know that those had no velocity sensitive keyboard. So it doesn't matter how hard you press a key on a Minimoog or how fast or how hard you hit it. Um, it's always the same volume. Okay, so it's no change. Good, let me think about what I can do here. Okay, throw this away, we get a talk octave higher. 
Get it up to fire, okay. Okay, the idea is only to have a, a little synth line that is playing somewhere in the background and is adding up for some parts. Let me go to the beginning. Let's see how it sounds in the beginning. Oh, stop. Go back. Okay, that won't work here like this. We have to refine that a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Take it here. So the first hook, see how this sounds. So the second one, uh, this is a intro, so I have to go here. Let me check that. This is on 29. Okay, that's right, like this. Like this. So in this case here, we will take only the second part here here and put it all up like I said before like this go here this okay yes it's So what I normally do then when I'm at this stage is I play the whole thing through, listen to individual parts and think about what can I change, what is good, and what is not, and bring in some other things, some smaller things to edit. And then I make um, export, make some stems, send it over to somebody who can put a vocal over it or rap or whatever. And then I get it back and can refine it uh, depending on what he did. And first what I do again is I go to my favorite fake mastering. Gonna show you this. Um, yep. To do this, I need to have my mix bus set up here. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay. Add a group track, call it mix bus. Mix bus, which is right before. Okay, here. Let me go back. I didn't use. I used the synth here. Is the instrument reverb? Go here. Call this keyboard. Oops. Call this keyboard. Okay, the mix bus. These two I didn't use, I had them only in the template, so let's put them away so I don't see them. And now I'm going to the mix bus here, here the mix bus, and I'm going to the routing up here, and I'm going from the beginning. So piano string spell sample, these are the ones I don't need, because these are the ones that are in the unused, I used for the sampler in the beginning. Then also the groove agent, the complete drums. I don't know which was this sample here. Let me check this one, uh, which one this is. This, ah, this is the sample here in the beginning. Oh, okay. I want to copy that also over to the breakdown to the second part. This is the, let's color it so I know that I need it. Go ahead and color this keyboard. And this is also going to the mix bus. Then this is going to drums, 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 drums. The stereo out of the drums is going to the mix bus. This is going also to the mix bus. The bass, I can put the bass together in two basses or in a group, in your own group, but I put them again in the mix bus. Then I have the Wurlitzer to the mix bus. The sample live is the big sample, the sample playing. The two, two guitars are in the mix bus. And also my instrument. Here and the synth are going to the mix bus. And then here at the mix bus, um, I go here at the insert setting here. 
and load effects chain preset and i have one that's called fake mastering maybe you have seen that last last time it's a compressor the frequency and uh, the maximizer okay first i use the compressor to glue everything a little bit together like here i put it on a ratio of about three to one uh, medium attack time here fast release time so that i can glue it a little bit together here not too much only two or three or four dbs of gain reduction and i go to the frequency here looks like this i have a little bit highs here i dip the 200 range to make some room for vocals Okay, Reggie wants me to send him the song. Yes, I will do. And if any of the other guys want to have the song, just drop me a mail. I can send you the template. It will work with everything. Uh, it it's, has no samples in it, no uncleared samples. And um, if I put it in a zip file, then uh, it will be not too big, so I can even mail it. So I have here, my lows are in mid-side. And in the mids, I do what I did for the 808 drums. I had that bump here and get rid of the lows. In the side, I have cut the bass. I normally I do so about 80 or 100 because in the sides, I don't need the, the bass. I want the bass be in the middle. So like this. Okay, let me check that. Sounds like there's some distortion here or some overload here. How's that coming? Ah, oh, the drums here is too loud. Okay, ah, oh, that's because of the... Because of the clap here. Check that here. Okay, a faster release. And turn down the output a bit. Okay. Okay, where are the drums here? Okay, let me go here, the drum bus, and compress it also. So go to the dynamics. Which one? Oh yeah, we take the 1176, the vintage compressor, or 1176 style. So let the transients through, medium release. So, okay, go here, where's my mix bus here? Here, mix bus is here. Okay, cut this with a compressor a little bit. And then I need the maximizer here. Oh, that's too much. That's pumping then. Okay, there is some thing odd. Let's check if my sample is drums, 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 drums. There's something wrong with my drums here that's hitting too hard. Okay, why is that? Okay, there's something wrong with the claps. Uh, okay, that's... Uh, the claps are too... a little bit... too different. So, now this is hitting too hard, okay. Here on this one.
So we need more drums. We need more drums. Go to the mix bus. Look for the maximizer. Okay, now we can have some here. So, so let's save this for a moment. So now, as I said before, the next one I do is just let the whole thing run through. And if I hear something, I change it on the fly. Maybe you have seen that when I did that live arrangement of a song. I just take my beloved mute tool and mute or unmute. That's why I sell them like here, cut things. Most of the time I have them and cut them in the, in the end only so that um, I can hear or I can, without copying them, can hear in an instant uh, what it's doing. So I'm going to pump up my volume here a little bit and I let that whole thing run now uh, from the top, from the beginning. And uh, don't worry if I'm going to change things. And uh, I'm turning off my microphone for a moment because you will hear my um, my, tr uh, my my speakers otherwise. Okay, so let's just get it on. Aha, uh -huh. don't loop it, don't cycle it, or it will go to infinity with the intro and never go to the song. So now, back again. So, there you are, 
let's save this. That turned totally different than I expected it to be because uh, when I tried this before, I used uh, a different kind of sample. I played s different things. I played more chords on the on the keyboard, on the piano, so it was more movement. Now with the longer chords and the sample, the piano sounds for me more relaxing. Now I would go and uh, I, I won't stress you too much with that. I would go and um, would um, refine it a little bit, bring some little spots and not not many, only to s for the for the vocalist, for the rapper, for the artist to know where the change is. So you have something in the transmission, like from the part to the hook or from the hook to the breakdown so that he knows when he's putting his rap on. Uh, that's it. There you go. And uh, or there you have to be. They have to start. So uh, let's go here. And I found that this has to be in the end again and uh, the synth. And so that's it for today. Uh, that was fun. I hope you liked it. Uh, so what did I do today? I uh, faked a sample just by playing three instruments, using the crunchalizer to make it sound old, like from a record, and then putting it into Groove Agent and putting it to Slices. I explained what it means to have it in turntable mode. In turntable mode, it's um, like, yeah, sounding like uh, when you turn it up on the turntable, sample it, and then sped it down, speed it down, or you just pitch it down, and like with a 12-bit sampler. And um, yeah, I showed you the 808 drums. They are in um, Halion, Halion 808s. Um, well, I like to have all the time here in the 808s. Is it there? Why is that playing here, everything? It's not all inputs. I need this one. Okay, I don't know why the world it says also playing when I go to the 808 drums. I don't care. Oh, I have that here. Here. I mean, there's also somewhere here a long bass. Where is it? Where is it? I have to go down here an octave on my keyboard. That's the one that's dropping. This is the long one. And if you use this, and you use, for example, that envelope shaper, the multi-band envelope shaper, to make the bass longer, then you can use it as a bass, for example. In this, uh, in this song, I used one of my deep basses I made in Retrolog. It goes like this. And it's very simple. Just bass notes here, almost no highs, just to have the bass here, the deep bass. Okay, just let's, where is my linker shell? Yeah, here we are, here I am again, in a second, uh, on the second webcam. Let's go back to the beginning and let's just recap. What are we doing next week or we're doing nothing at next week. So I showed you Cubase plugins only, dropping assembling groove agent. 808 drums in, in Cubase and 909s are in Cubase in Halion, not in Groove Agent. And uh, next time, I'm next Saturday, I'm doing nothing. Okay, I take a day off. And then I prepare making EDM sounds with Retrolog and Flux. If you are into EDM or if you like to see how I make my sounds, first I want to talk a little bit about what you need, uh, what the basic functions are, what the difference in the um waveforms are and then i will make the sounds and then i will make a synth wave track then on the 17th from start to finish but in this case i will not make it from scratch like i did today it was unprepared that's why it's not the best beat in the world in this case i will make a synth wave bass a synth wave track so you hear from the beginning where i'm aiming to go and then i will use uh, i will make all sounds from scratch again and so you see how I make the sounds and um, how I make the song. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Reggie, I will put the arrangement here in the Dropbox later. So you just, it's called, I think it's called Beat Making Tune. Uh, so you can use it. And 
I hope you liked it. I'm staying here in the chat for another five, six minutes. So if you have any questions, feel free to write something in the chat. And I'm going to play that in the background. So have a nice weekend. Stay safe in these crazy Corona times. And I see you in two weeks, maybe when I'm going to sound design and making EDM sounds from scratch in Flux and in Retrolog. So thanks for tuning in. This has been Harold from Hitroom Studio. Goodbye. So, okay, thank you very much, stay safe, and see you next time. Goodbye.